as promised, here is my labor and delivery with Ryder. I'm Meg and I'm passionate about finding ways to make life with kids easier in the kitchen. So as scheduled to be induced on Monday, June 16th, my parents had flown in a couple nights before because they were going to be watching the big kids and it was kind of just a relaxed morning. We didn't have to go until 11 a.m. Alan, Alan actually went into work that morning for an important meeting and then came home and picked me up and we said goodbye to the kids. They had been super excited to meet their baby brother, so I wasn't quite expecting the reaction I got when I left. Not now. Mom, say goodbye now. I know, not now, buddy. Mom and Daddy go now. We got to the hospital right at 11, and I'm always really scared that they're gonna tell me I have to go home because there's no rooms available, but fortunately they let me right in and they actually put me in the same room that I had spent four nights with um, when I was in preterm labor with Brooks, so I felt very comfortable there. Um, they monitored me for a little while, contractions and the baby's heartbeat, and then at 1 p.m. they started the induction process. And for me, I've never actually had Pitocin. Um, I've always been given mesoprostol, which is just, um, something to ripen your cervix, and that's always been very successful for me. So they started that at 1 p.m., and then there was just a whole lot of waiting. Fortunately, there was some pretty good stuff on TV. Yay, and I had gotten really into Breaking Bad and made sure to save a couple episodes of that. Alan just went to pick up a little bit of dinner, so it's just me and my Breaking Bad. In previous labors, I've been able to walk around, which I really think sped things up, but in this labor, because of my previous placental eruptions, I had to hang out in bed the entire time, which was kind of a bummer. I got these sexy leg cuffs on, hang oh. my leg. Blood so after four hours, the doctor came back in and checked me. I had been two centimeters when I got to the hospital, which I was really excited about. I thought that things would move very quickly, but after four hours, I was still only three centimeters, so there was still more waiting. You did. Just do a little work. Important. Two hours later, they came back, checked me again, and I was still three centimeters, which was definitely not good news. Oh, I'm a little frustrated because um, they induced me like five hours ago and um, I'm progressing, but they said if I don't continue to progress, they might send me home. So I'm really nervous about that because that would not be a good scenario. Fortunately, my contractions were getting stronger and more regular. So even though I was a little bit nervous about going home, I still had faith that we would deliver that night. And sure enough, by 10 p.m., they moved me into a true delivery room, and it was actually the same room that I delivered Brooks in, so I felt kind of comfortable there. At least one of us was able to get a little bit of rest. My contractions continued to get more intense, and by 1 p.m., I desperately wanted an epidural, so the anesthesiologist came in, and he actually recognized me from the I'm So Pregnant video, so we had a moment of laughter there, even though I was in a lot of pain. Unfortunately, the epidural only worked on half of my body. I had the same exact thing happen with Avery, so I definitely was not able to get any sleep, um, but fortunately, by 3 p.m., things were really moving along. You wired this break? You ready to have a baby? I'm ready. Ready? I love you. I had actually never experienced my water breaking before because they've always broken it for me when I started to push. So this was kind of a cool experience for me and because my epidural wasn't really working, I could definitely feel it. Um, and, and once my water broke, the contractions were really intense as if I had no epidural. And fortunately, my doctor happened to be in the hospital for a delivery already and she had been watching my tracings on the monitor. And she came right in, she's like, I'm pretty sure you're, you're fully dilated, you're complete. She checked me, sure enough I was. Um, I did like one practice push and she said, let's break down the bed and get this baby out. And he was out at 3.13. So Alan and I, um, we were both just really relieved. We both started crying. I'm not sure if we've really done that before. And we just got to spend a lot of quality time with him. He found his thumb right away. He was super snuggly. Sure enough, he has the same spiky hair as Brooks did, but it's a lot lighter. Once I was in the recovery room, we let everyone know that he had been born and my whole family came to see me in the hospital and the kids got to meet him for the first time. And it was just a really good feeling to have my whole family there. Can you say hi to Ryder? So I actually only spent one night in the hospital. It was kind of sad to say goodbye to the hospital because I think it'll be the last time I deliver. Hi, hospital room. Thanks for a nice day. But it was also really, really nice to bring Ryder home for the first time. Ryder's home. We're home, buddy. So all in all, I'm thankful for a pretty smooth delivery and everyone seems to be adjusting pretty well to our family of five. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys soon. Bye guys. Okay, it's okay. There's a spring top thing in here. Not too big of her.